And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest shit show, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Miltra, and with me I have a returning good brother to the temple, creator of our creator of Ardana, co-creator of the of the mole, of the mole man from Mars, and soon to be creator of the upcoming super robot epic Eternal Armor, the one and only Wyatt Holiday. How are you doing, man? Ah, oh, man, good. Thanks for having me back at the monastery, brother. Thanks, thanks for coming back in. So, um. Something that I think I think the first I think the first thing that we need to, that we need to do is is set is set a bit of ground ruling when it comes to this particular thing. So, um, first off, give give me the elevator pitch with Eternal Armor. Now, obviously, there's been the Indiegogo page, but I'd like but I'd like to hear it from your mouth. Yeah, man. Um, Eternal Armor. Yeah, uh, you know, grew up. Uh, big fan of things like Mazinger Z, Space mm -hmm. Battleship, Yamato, things like that. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, as far as the story itself, uh, about 20 years ago, a fisherman and his son, um, they were on the lake and they found something sticking out of the water and it turned out to be the top of the head of this giant robot that had been in this lake for God knows how long. Um, and uh, most of the robot was stuck in the mud. So, of course, you know, part of the head was out of the mud and the water was low. So it was, you know, they were able to see it with the, uh, the drought and whatnot. And, uh, yeah, some scientists came and recover it as you know, they tend to do and proceeded to study this robot. And years later, when some bad guys showed up as they also tend to do, uh, you know, they had a pilot that they had trained and the pilot fought these bad guys. And, uh, Autumn off, saved the world, and uh, now we are some years after that, and uh, we're going to get into, you know, some new bad guys are coming, or should I say, uh, the uh, the bad guys, the other bad guys answered to. Well, we'll, we'll maybe we'll put it that way, and um, they're on their way, and uh, we're going to get into uh, some of the origins of the robot and where it came from and all that kind of good stuff. And uh, since then, humans have built other robot, other super robots as well. And uh, you know, it's going to be fun. It's going to be a lot of characters. Yep. Now, when it now when it comes to when it, when it comes to the whole no, the whole notion of um of super of super robot because. Obviously, I've had I've had Mark Kern on this on the show. In fact, I had him on earlier this earlier this month, and so we had to deal with um that debate since Mecha come in all shapes and sizes. What mm -hmm. sticks to you more about about the super about the super robot genre compared to other styles of Mecha? Uh, one thing I really like about super robots is you know, it's not to say it's not that way in other styles of Mecha, but you know, usually the robot's unique, um, and it's almost kind of like it's an alter ego to the character that pilots it, in a way. So it's almost like Superman is Clark Kent's robot. And, um, don't uh, give DC and that, any ideas. <laughs> so that's the way I view, that's the way I view, um, you know, uh, my characters are going to be, you know, heroes in both capacities, so they'll be, you know, doing a lot of karate fighting and shootouts and things like that on the human level but at the same time you know they'll have the the robot monsters to deal with as well um but yeah of course i do like other mecha stuff like gun i'm a huge robotech fan macross all that good stuff so mm -hmm. and when it comes when it comes to um now, obviously, when it comes to when it comes to Super Robot, um, I know you meant I know you mentioned Mazinger Z, so I'm I'm I think I can I think it'd be fair of me to assume that you have some that you have some familiarity with um going to Guy's work. Um, did oh you, yeah. Um, were you at all familiar with uh, Getter Robo? Yeah, yeah. Um, saw. So I was able to rent uh some of the VHS tapes like when I was a kid growing up. Um. That's how I saw a lot of that, uh, some Grindizer, things like that. 
maybe Guy King, I believe, at the time. Yeah. Um, I don't. <laughs> I'd have to I'd have to double ch- I have to double check, but I don't think um I don't think Guy King was directly one of the gu- one of the guys work. Oh no 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 I don't think so. But I was just naming seventies robots. Yeah, but so. within, within that would you within that particular thing would you say would you say that the that the big visual inspiration is um is is Mazinger? Somewhere between, uh, somewhere between uh, Mazinger Z, um, a samurai, and Optimus Prime. What I would say is kind of uh, is kind of what you get. Uh, okay, the samurai right. thing I can uh, see with the helmet. Um, yeah. But when it comes to Optimus Prime, is that mainly because of the color scheme? Yeah, it's mainly because of the blank face. The uh, you know it's just got the eyes and no nose and no mouth. Uh, at, least, at least you did. Uh, at least you didn't do it where where it was a mask that act that actually had a face. Hi, Michael. Right, no, no, no. <laughs> um. But when it com- but um. When it com- when it comes to when it comes the other thing that made that very much made me think of the. Of Mazinger as as one of as one of the main um, one of the setups when it came to the visual identity had to do mm-hmm. with the pi- had to do with some of the pilot images I saw in the um, interior samples, mm-hmm. and to that end I'm get I'm get I'm guessing that you have that you're having the mindset where where um when the ar- when the armor is moving you're not you're trying to have it move like a per like a person would move not trying to have it move. Like like um, power armor would move a la, um, a la Gun- Gundam or uh, Macross. Yeah, very. It's very yeah, very human in in its movements. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, yeah. Get it, you know, it's a way to, you know, it's it's definitely gonna turn out to be more dy- dynamic on the comic page yeah. as opposed to, you know, can't have the robot running with his arms by his sides. You know. No, I. <laughs> I um, I never. I am. I have yet to see somebody try and do a a mecha Naruto running, and honestly, I never want to see that. And yeah. Anyone who does, and I think anyone who does want to see that should be quickly flogged with while while, pretty while, good a, to see. while a ta- while a town crier um proclaims the beatings will continue until morale improves. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and if that seems cruel, that is not me being cruel. That is me being kind. But yeah, luckily no one's done that yet. Yeah. So I, I, I'm not going to be the first. So, but when it come when it comes to now what when it, now um obviously bringing up the whole Mazinger thing um Mazinger def, definitely had a. In both in both in the original version and, and um and its successors, whether it be great whether it be Great Mazinger or eventually um Mazin Kaiser, mm-hmm. they had they had a they had a veritable arsenal of tools to work with. And with Colonel Armor, is that is that kind of thing gonna be gonna be a um tradition followed? Yes. I, I, I hate to give you the short version. Um, let me try to maybe without. Okay, let's go. Let's go. Let's go with one of the classics. Do we have a rocket punch? Not exactly. Um, but some there's there there are some homages there. Um, for sure. Uh, but uh, no 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 rocket punch per se. Um, but, and even, even, even with the lack of that, I'm, I'm guessing that some of the, some of the old motifs are still going to be there, like, especially the whole thing of, of announcing finishers, which I know some, I know some of the people who have a stick up their ass about realism don't care for that, but, um, there actually is a historical reason why that's done. Um, and it, it, tie, it ties back to 
Theater. Oh, right. Well, they probably had no special effects, right? And so. Well, it has it has more to do with it has more to do with the fact that there's a there's a kind of there's a kind of with Kabuki Theater there's a kind of ebb and flow between between the um the familiar the familiar poses um movements and the like and the and the audience's reaction <clears throat> um in a weird way in a weird way it's got more in common with um professional wrestling sure um it does it does it certainly doesn't hurt that there is no there is no quiet coloring when it comes to kabuki mm-hmm. um which is which is the point because it's meant to be the polar opposite of no which is all about subtlety but right. there is a, but there's a specific kind of signature pose that's often used in kabuki theater called mie and i look at the i look at those sort of um those sort of naming out finishers and the like as an, as a reincarnation of that. I can see that. Yeah, yeah. Um, For sure. It's it's a pretty it's a, it's a tell that that um, you know how there you know how there are certain mo- certain movements and, and the like that are very clear tells in fiction. Mm-hmm. Um. To the point where you where you only have to see a few episodes of say Ultraman to know what to know when you're gonna see the when you're gonna see the forearm beam. Right. Yes. Exactly. Yes. Yes. Oh. And yeah, we are one hundred percent gonna do some of that. Yeah. So now the, when now I when it comes to now when it comes to the um. When it comes to pot, when it comes to the the uh, setup, now you you guys are doing you guys are do six doing sixty four pages now. Um, I realize with some of your past work that's been in color. Um, what was the reasoning you guys had for going for black and for black and white approach? Was it to just carry on the feel of it being a manga? Yeah, yeah, really. Um, I wanted to, you know, we're not we're not really trying to emulate manga entirely you know there's gonna be you know some western storytelling elements and things like that as well you know but um yeah i wanted it to kind of have that authentic look to it um you know a lot of the manga i've enjoyed in the past um well you know it's it's black and white so um with that kind of grayscale tone to it um and uh, I just wanted to do something that looked like that. Um, I thought we could do that, do 64 pages, tell a bigger story, or at least, you know, the beginning of a bigger story. And, um, you know, be able to offer it, you know, at the same uh, competitive price points as we would, say, a 48-page book with color. So, mm-hmm. you know. And what... Now, when it comes when it comes to a bit when it comes to a bit of a storytelling, obviously we can't ha- we can't we can't have we can't have the ar- the armor occupying all occupying all stories. So I'm ge- so I'm guessing we'll be getting a, I'm guessing we'll be getting a fair amount of de- of introduction when it comes to the per- the chosen pilot. Mm-hmm. And oh yeah, oh yeah. Okay, le- okay. Let's get the let's get the obvious out of the way. We're probably I'm. We are probably not dealing with a Shinji problem here. <laughs> yeah, no, no. Um, yeah, no. Not, yeah, no. It won't be quite like Shinji. Um, our protagonist, uh, I will... It's not really spoilers, but you know, I, I will say that uh, the story is going to—it's going to actually have a couple of protagonists, um, and uh, but one of the two pro, one of the two major protagonists, uh, yeah, his brother was the uh, original pilot of the uh, of the main robot you see, and uh, but he was a kid at that time, so. Uh, can't say what happened to his brother, but I can say that uh, he is no longer. <laughs> he will not be piloting anything anymore. Yeah. 
and taking that taking that into taking that into account um when it com when it comes to when it com when it comes to hit his when it comes to the uh, approach when it com as far as building around eternal armor is it is it going to be one of those cases where you have a bit a bit of a small organization built built around the study of this thing since this is well, it's obvi It's obviously the biggest. It's obviously the biggest O part in the world in this particular setting, I'd imagine. Yes. Yes. Um. Yeah. I don't want to get. Um. I, I guess you would say they're more independent researchers, but they are an organization. But I didn't really want to get bogged down into things like. You know, some military, somebody shows up and tells them what they can and can't do with the robot and all that stupid Avengers Civil War shit. I don't really want to. No, that that. Wouldn't, that wouldn't I, I'm fit. not interested in taking the fun out of it. I'm interested in, you know, so, so, you know, they don't have red tape and nonsense they have to deal with like that. But yes, there is a, there is an organization who studies it. Um, the head scientist now was one of the uh, one of the assistant scientists that originally was there when uh, they first began studying the robot, and uh, so uh, a lot of generational things will come into play as far as the characters, and uh, it'll tie into the original the original events. There's going to be a lot going on. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, and when when it comes to would you would it be fair to would it be fair to say that one of the, now obviously you can't go into too much in the way of spoilers but would it be fair of me to say that one of the big one of the bigger mysteries that you that you have with, the, with this work is exa exactly what exactly what the capacity of the of the armor is and how and how the hell it got here absolutely Yes, that is uh, that is definitely one of the uh, one of the biggest mysteries is uh, where did it come from? How did it get here? Who made it? Why? And uh, it's gonna be fun. <laughs> it's gonna be fun finding out. Yeah, and that that's why I, that's why I said that that's why I compared it to an old part, you know, out of place artifact. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, very, yeah, very much, yeah. It um. Yeah. And now, when it comes when it comes to when it comes to the creature design, the um, the kaiju, for lack of a better word, mm -hmm. um, what did when it cut were were there any sort were there any sort of um unwritten rules that you had as far as far as kaiju design? Because I'm I'm guessing you had brainstormed a bunch of different designs before you picked a few that you were going to stick with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, that, you know, as far as the, uh, you know, the kaiju, the evil robots, um, that sort of thing, uh, I wanted them, you know, to me, the criteria kind of is, you know, if I could see Dr. Demon standing there with a staff calling out the name of whatever, whatever this monster may be, and, uh, it looks suitably, uh, you know, suitably, suitably 70s and kind of, you know, kind of had that barrel shaped torso, you know, cylindrical, you know, limb type shapes. Um, you know, if you could give it a couple of heads or a couple of tails, things like that. Yeah. You know, something that uh, something that looks appropriate to, uh, you know, kind of kind of the time period and genre that we're kind of uh, doing a throwback to in a way. Mm hmm. <laughs> Um, um, you know, uh, really the number one criteria is, uh, <clears throat> you know, does it look cool? But, you know, do, does, does this look like, you know, what I want a, uh, you know, soul of Chogokin <laughs> of this, you know, but another day, another story. Yeah. Um, and when it, um, when it comes to when it comes to when it comes to di doing that doing that kind of thing, um, as you mentioned, enemy mecha, which um, thanks for thank you for clarifying that. So I'm get so we are de we are dealing with um, enemy giant mecha most of the most of the time, not and not um, something more organic. 
Is um, the original one were more like Mecca. We'll see what happens. What <laughs> we'll see what comes next. Um, a bit of a question that I do that I do have is is there now. If if this is getting into a bit of if this is getting a bit into spoilery end of things, let me let me know. But mm-hmm. would it be fair to say that Eternal Armor is, is semi sentient? Mm, a, f- a fair enough assessment. And that's uh. Yeah, I get into spoiler territory if I go too more, but uh, you know, if I go too much further, but uh, I would say that's a that's a pretty reasonable, uh, pretty reasonable assumption or a uh, guess or uh, you know something on the wish list. <laughs> but yeah. <clears throat> now, when it com- when it comes to the when it comes to the when it comes to the appro- the approach of um of its o- of its origins um was there in- was there anything that particularly sparked the idea to d- to um do this aside from aside from the um origins of of Maz and of um the works of Go Nagai Mister Kill 'Em All and so- and so on um well you guys uh you guys do a lot of um. Uh... Tabletop gaming and stuff here at the monastery, don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, um, yeah, I used to play a heck of a lot of uh, Mechton back in the day. Oh, it's it's funny you mentioned Mechton because in a few in a few weeks we'll be <laughs> doing a um, we'll be doing a light we'll be doing a life path themed stream stream on um on Mech on Mechton. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, um, we did well, we cool. did it a, we did something similar a few weeks ago where we just um. Where did random life generation through uh, Punk twenty twenty, and mm-hmm. we're going to be doing it with um with Me- with Mecton um in a few weeks. Nice, nice. Yeah, the yeah, uh, yeah. Nice, very cool. Yeah, um, yeah. When I was in college, um, you know, I ran a game that was a l- something a little closer to maybe uh. Maybe Macross, Robotech, something like that, um, Gundam. But, you know, uh, on the side, I was kind of working on a super robot campaign that nobody ever wanted to play. So I just decided to take all the characters and <laughs> make my own story and make the robots myself instead mm-hmm. of having any player characters. And uh, eventually I turned it into a comic book. Which makes, se- which makes sense. When it comes to... Now, when it came, when it came, to, when it came to some of that... Um, Okay, since since this always gets brought up every time there's a discussion of of super robots, did you ever play any iteration of Super Robot Wars in the past? Yes, I played a version that was on uh, Super Nintendo. Mm-hmm. Oh, so, or maybe I. Pl- it seems like I might have played. I may have had an import on um, PS2. It seems like I might have, but I can't remember. Um, that one that. I'd um I'd be that one I could definitely see, um, because that because I've seen that a lot when it comes to pe- when it comes to people um, getting into the early days of of that um of that franchise. Mm-hmm. You know the be- the be- one of the best franchises that we'll never fully be able to get to get here in the states because licensing hell. I know. I know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, well, you know. Maybe we'll, maybe one day we'll get an Eternal Armor game. Um, I if that if that ends up happening, I just all I'd say is um, keep ba- keep Bandai Namco far away from it because they prob- <laughs> they'd probably try and have it play like a like a Gundam game, and this and this does not need that. I'd say, I'd say if there's I'd say if there's any if there's any old game that a that a theoretical Eternal Armor video game should play like it's um, destroy all monsters. Yeah, I could see that for sure. Yeah, yeah. You know, that was a fun one. Something, a, something a little more arcadey. Something a little, a little more crazy. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, yeah, because by the time, you know, by the time we get all our characters and robots and everything introduced, mm -hmm. uh, you know, maybe there'll be quite a few of them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that that and some sort of flight module. We always got to have a flight module. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's... Uh, yeah, and, uh, the flight module was going to be a given, but, uh, yeah, yeah, yes, yes, that will happen. Yeah, I'm just say I'm just saying that <laughs> even even though you're doing a mix of a mix of of east and west when it comes to the, when it comes to the um when it comes to the storytelling with this with this setup um there's still some there's still some traditions that have to be followed. Absolutely. Absolutely. There you know, there are a lot of tropes we're sticking to. I mean, you know, I you know, I wasn't trying to. Uh, it's definitely going to be a recognizable. I mean, if you're a fan of manga and you like robots and mm -hmm. stuff like that, I mean, you're not going to be steered too far off the path. You know, but you know, at the same time, you know, if you like, you know, the the Western style, you know, work that I've done, um, then you know, it's not. You know, it doesn't get too far away from uh, that type of storytelling as well. So, I mean, mm -hmm. it's basically, you know, Wyatt's vision of the anime he always wanted to see but doesn't exist. Yeah. So, so you know, that's uh, that's kind of where I'm going with it. Now all we need is, Kage is Kagayama to do a track for it. <laughs> yes! Hey, hey, hard. Hey, if hardcore Mecca can get can get can get it from Mr. DBZ himself, I don't see why not. Hey, right. Well, we'll have to see. Mm -hmm. But when it now, you now you've mentioned the you mentioned the we, you mentioned the western parts of that. Now, given the fact that you're doing this mix of east and west um, storytelling, what would be some, what would be what were some of the things from both from both sides you decided to keep and decided to drop when it comes to storytelling styles? Hmm. Ah, uh, gosh. Ah, uh, you know, keep. You know, we're definitely gonna have. You know, the. Uh, the young character learning his way, probably not that good at first, but he's got some talent. Uh, you know, it's going to take him some battles to be pretty good at anything. And then, uh, you know, from there, we'll probably move on to, uh, you know, all the discoveries and good stuff. But, you know, even, even as the character is discovering things, the reader will be discovering these things. But, uh, and then we'll get into territory that, you know, nobody in the in the in the universe of the of the story is really knows um but uh you know we're gonna keep that kind of thing some of those tropes obviously there's you know it, it, you've seen my other books on um, there's we haven't shown a lot yet but obviously there's gonna be uh you know that uh manga anime type of fan service um so that sort of stuff will be there uh you know once again not anything above it you know, like a PG, PG-13 rating, nothing like that. But, um, you know, um, you know, it's, uh, something I would say that I kept from uh, Eastern elements is uh, just, uh, you know, everyone, you know, everyone will have Japanese names, that's for sure. Um, it'll take place in a, you know, near future iteration of, you know, I guess you could say Japan. Um, I would laugh my ass off. If you wrote it out that it takes place in the distant year two thousand. The distant year two thousand in Kentucky. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it reminds me of that Harvey Birdman episode with the Jetsons talking about we are from the future of two thousand two. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, uh, but yeah, man, um. You know, and then some of the things that we might not have kept from Eastern, uh, you know, I, I won't say the unrealistic stuff because I'm not really that worried about realism. Um, 
you know, it's not going to get goofy, but at the same time, some of the, uh, I guess some of the more comedic elements, not to say there won't be comedic elements, but it's, it's going to be more of a Western style of humor than it is more of a Eastern culture style of humor. If that makes sense. Yeah. Um, and I could, I could certainly see, see that. And pl plus some, um, Look, even in a story as 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 serious as this, as this as this is, and I'm and well, rel well, relatively speaking, I'm not I'm not saying we're dealing with grim dark shit here, right? <laughs> but we but the but in any sort in any sort of story like this, you need some sort of comic relief because the emphasis here is the word well relief. Mm -hmm. You need you need to. You need to kind of give people a breather before the next bit of serious shit happens. For sure. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's not all grim serious. Yeah, no. The, yeah, the, we, leave the, we leave the cynics to the older characters in the story, and then, uh, you know, all our protagonists, they're, uh, they're learning their way and making mistakes and getting to know each other and you know building relationships and all you know all the things that come along with that so yeah when when it comes to the now when it comes to that that particular um that, those particular story storytelling mot motifs um Setting wise, are you are you doing it where where um where people where people are just being made being made aware of of the of these of these kaiju and the and the armor or is he or by the time the story starts has he already been using the thing for a little while? Um, when the story starts, we are about eight years after the um. The, the last great battle, the last final battle, I guess mm -hmm. you could say. Um, so we're about eight years removed from that. So people have been aware for a while. Um, before then, they, you know, they would have kept the, uh, the existence of the robot a secret. So, um, you know, the monsters show up and then uh, the robot shows up and people are like, what the hell? And, um, you know... The pilot largely, uh, you know, was shrouded in mystery for a while, that sort of thing, um, almost like a secret identity, uh, which once again goes back into, you know, what I said about uh, I kind of view the uh, the robot as being the alter ego, you know, as, as being the super alter ego of a normal guy. So. Yeah. And I'm. Um... I'm guessing that I'm guessing that for a good for a good chunk of that, if the pilot is seen, they'd be wearing one of those one of the one of those um helmets that can that conceals a good chunk of the face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is definitely a is definitely a very Mazinger um, tradition. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, yeah, for sure. Um, <laughs> yeah, not sure what you know. Not not sure how much that helmet would you know helps you, but uh, looks cool, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Although well, I do like the uh, I like the Macross style of helmet as well myself. Um, so, but yeah, yeah, it's more of a, a more of a partial helmet, I guess you could say. Well, the 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 other thing I can't the other thing I can't help but no, but note is that if some if somebody want if somebody wants to to make a realism argument kind of barking up the wrong tree here oh yeah uh, yeah man like you might as well turn around at step one really um because uh yeah yeah i just it's a giant robot mm -hmm. <laughs> so from from we don't know where so and plus, it's comic books, man. I mean, I don't. If I wanted realism, I'd go play a. Ta I'd go make a tabletop game called Payments and Paychecks, and characters would balance their checkbooks and go to their boring ass job for forty hours a week. 
You know, the sad thing is I'm pretty sure someone at TG had suggested that idea, and it's gotten shot down <laughs> for obvious reasons. <laughs> <clears throat> no thanks, man. I don't want to play a game or read a book about anything I can do in real life. So, if I can do it in real life, I'll just go do it. Yeah, I, um, I, as I've said, real, I prefer believability over realism. Mm -hmm. as, long, as long as you establish your rules and stick to them, you're not gonna you're not gonna earn my ire. And I, I think, um, I think so. I think so far you've pretty consistent did you when you were when you were developing did you um write out a set of rules about what um about what can about what can can't be done especially when it comes to the um visual design yes oh yeah um what were yeah, some I, and don'ts um oh gosh uh you know a lot of the rule, you know, visually, uh, don't know that there were a ton of do's and don'ts. Um, as aside from, you know, the style we're trying to uh, trying to accomplish, as far as the setting itself is more of a indeterminate near future, not so far away that things aren't recognizable. So, you know, a lot of the buildings will look a little like modern earth but some of them will have that kind of uh city of the future look to them um things like that but as far as the rule a lot of the rules came into like <sighs> nerdy stuff man um i'm uh yeah i'm uh yeah i'm an engineer <laughs> in my day job <laughs> so um a lot of the rules came into things like how do the you know how do the power generators work why does why does this do this how does a lot of there's a lot of technical stuff luckily though we're going to have a uh, a technical manual that uh that you can get with the book <laughs> they don't have the tech specs and all that for the robots that appear in and you know some of the things about how they work and power generation things like that mm -hmm. um, um. Um, you know, as far as the don'ts, um, you know, visually, I just, uh, a lot of the times, man, I, I'm not much of an artist, but I can get the point across. So a lot of times I'll do a really crappy sketch and, uh, you know, tell an artist or whatever, you know, imagine a good version of this and and so really that's a lot of you know a lot of ways that's that's a lot of how a lot of visuals develop like um yeah like our donna i designed her myself things like that um i do a lot of the character designs myself mm -hmm. um sometimes if i'm not particularly you know overly picky um you know i may say uh as long as it's big and looks scary i don't care but you know um but you know, like I said before, I kind of, I kind of like to keep that that '70s robot style of the uh, almost barrel-shaped body, cylindrical limbs. Uh, there will be some deviations from that, especially as we get into some of the uh, some of the newer creatures and things. Um, but yeah, man, um, you know, you just there are a lot of rules about, you know do's and don'ts as they apply to you know as they apply to the setting itself and how things work and mm -hmm. you know does, does magic exist no of course not or does it i'm just kidding it doesn't <laughs> but <laughs> not in the way not in the way you would typically think for like ardana or yeah. something like that but uh you know that's the term you know our, our, are the bad guys aliens? Uh, you know, if not, where they come from? Um, you know, how does all their stuff work? So, yeah, like I say, uh, some of that technical stuff, you know, probably doesn't entertain anyone but me. So I won't go over. You know, it's not like I'm going to go overboard explain it to me, to people. But if anybody does ever ask in the future, I'll you know I'll be able to yeah kind of tell them within a you know reasonable real world mm -hmm. capacity. But um, 
I'm guessing uh, the, yeah, yeah, long winded. I'm, co- I'm guessing the cockpit of the of the armor is gonna have a relatively simple design. Like it's it's yeah. not going to be the it's not going to be the limb the limb based approach that you would see in the um in the design of say a Gundam. No, no, it's good. It's very, it's very, yeah, it's pretty simple. Um, yeah, not not a far cry from say, you know, uh, modern aircraft or something like that, or even something you might have seen. You know, seventies anime. Yeah. Uh, like uh, maybe the interior of the lions in Voltron, something like that. Um, and with, and taking, taking that into, taking that into, into, into account, um, had, were, was there, was there ever a, was there ever a consideration of do, of doing the whole, um, having the pilot fly into the mech th- thing? Or was or was that um, shot down for being too obvious? That, that's definitely too obvious. I really, it was one of those things that was probably so obvious that I really didn't even consider it. Um, it just never came up. It was kind of like, you know, kind of like how I couldn't give him, you know, <laughs> wings that he can run and jump in the air, and then they attach to him and he flies off. You know. Mm-hmm. Uh, so uh yeah no uh you know like i say i i want you know the things that it's kind of you know kind of the things that it's a love letter to i want the people who enjoy those things to be able to be like aha he likes this and that but i don't want it to feel like you know it is that thing with the serial number shaved off so it's really you know so it's really yeah, you know, it's a, it's a juggling act. Yeah. Um, were there, since you mentioned since you mentioned a juggling act, were there any, were there any part were what part were there any parts that were um a bit tricky a bit trickier to balance in the in the early development? Hmm. Mm. Uh, yeah. I mean. Um, you know, originally the originally the story was going to be a little different, and then we worked on some designs and concepts. And sometimes I have something in my head, but but like say say a design or something turns out cooler than I expected, then I may be. It's not that I intentionally do it, but you know, if it looks super cool, then I might be motivated. I may have other ideas of things to do with it, add to it, or just something different I can do with it. And so the story kind of evolved a little um, from from the way it was going to be in the beginning. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah, um, we had a different protagonist um, in the beginning, and uh, so. Yeah, I forget what the original question was, but I may have answered it somewhere in there. Yeah, well, it's not. It's not like we ever have a clue of what we're what we're doing around here, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> I went so long. Uh, yeah, I think I answered. Yeah, uh, but yeah, but when it can, when it comes to now the now obviously the the Indiegogo um is isn't up yet, but it but obviously it's gonna it's gonna be up soon. Um, now you do have the you do have the mailing list set set up. Mm-hmm. Um, what ca- what um what ta- what when do you, when do you have when do you have it planned where people can actually start throwing money at you with, for the for the Indiegogo? And when I say throw money at you, yes, I am into, yes, I am visualizing some someone using um pe- someone using pennies as improvised grape. <laughs> um, uh, 
we're looking at um well right now uh the the books for the ardana legendary edition they've been ordered um from the printer they will be here um any day now um it's going to take me a few days to get worked out and fulfilled and then um so we're looking at maybe a little over two weeks from now so mm -hmm. As far as uh, as far as when the money throwing can commence, <laughs> and um, look in, in my defense about in my defense about the money throwing thing, I I play I I have played every single Final Fantasy s since the since the original, and of course I had to make some reference to the spare change ability. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I've forgotten about that. It's like every everybody says throwing money at it at, th at things doesn't doesn't yield results. Um, not with, not all. Um, that's not always the case. Um, that's funny. But, yeah. Um. So probably probably a little over two weeks. Um. I'm going to I'm going to shoot for the 13th of November. Um. That's not a hard date yet but it's looking extremely likely yeah. um and it's the and um are you pl are you planning on ha are you planning on having the indiegogo run for 30 or 60 days um it will probably be 60 in total um it's not there's not really if the book were going to be completely ready shortly after 30 days i could understand doing that but it you know there's no reason there's not there's not really going to be any reason to not do the additional 30 days so it'll probably be 60 altogether um but at the same time i'm i know some people do um when the campaign goes live, there's not going to be any extra tricky perks added later. There's like, if someone backs at the beginning, they're not going to, you know, wish they could refund and get a different one, you know, three weeks later when something new is added. Um, I don't really add new things. If I add new things, then they're just additional things. They're not, uh, you know, they're not in place of or... You know, so, uh, you know, I weaved all around, you know, went off the road on that one a bit, too. But uh, but yeah, the, you know, we're, it's probably going to be 60 altogether. I might add some cool things after the first 30, but that that's only to just add cool things for people that have already backed it. Um, I have a, a little idea of something a little different I'm going to do uh, for stretch goals this time as opposed to going with hard and fast numbers um i always have fun when i'm running a campaign so i'm just going to be adding stuff to to the you know to the perks as as i feel like it <laughs> so <laughs> um and there's going to be so much cool stuff already so it's going to be it's going to be crazy mm -hmm. um when it when it comes now, obviously, obviously, every every um, crowdfund worth its salt these days has some, has some sort of add-ons or some some sort of extra um, doodads, and I'm get I'm guessing, but well, one of the obvious ones is gonna is probably gonna be variant covers. But what are some of the other um, add-ons you've you've been considering for the for the um, Indiegogo? I know it's I know it's in flux right now. Mm -hmm. Um. um just you know off the top of my head um oh gosh um we're going you know i've been talking to numerous artists bringing other people on board to do uh various things um i'm not gonna drop any names just yet but uh we're going to have um man we're gonna have a t-shirt we're gonna have numerous trading cards we're gonna have a foil trading card we're gonna have numerous stickers we're gonna have magnets like kind of like fridge magnets we're gonna have art prints we're gonna have oh my gosh a lot of stuff man um 
and a set of pogs. So, pogs. Yeah, on a, on a card of six, it's going to be awesome. <laughs> so. You really are trying to go full retro with this. Might as well, man. Um, nobody's, you know, haven't seen anybody do it yet. And, you know, it's fun. I thought it'd be a fun little thing to, you know, throw in for everybody. Uh, so, uh, it'd be cool. Um, and, um, like, <laughs> like, are you, are you getting to, am I going to end up seeing you on a live stream playing poggers or something? Uh, probably not. <laughs> I've never, you know, I've never actually played. Um, that was kind of like it was a little bit after my time. So I guess when those were those were, I I remember them being around. I remember uh, you know people a little younger than me being into it. But uh, I just remember you. I just remember using it as um ammo because I had a slingshot. And um. <laughs> When you have a lar when you have a large enough slingshot, everything looks like ammunition. Mm -hmm. Oh, I believe that. Um, yeah, no, I I never actually really played, man. But uh, that'd be a fun thing to do. Um, you know, as uh, as I start working, uh, as I start working my way toward um, working on uh, some, you know. Some more gaming elements and things for some of the IPs that we're working on. Mm -hmm. And um, I'll definitely be I'll definitely be keeping uh, keeping an eye on how that tr how that transpires. Um, plus it plus it'll plus it'll always it'll always add for, add for more ins insanity and plus I can allow me to. Um, take this whole East versus West arg argument that some people have when somebody not from Japan makes something manga-inspired and skewer that with a lead pipe. <laughs> well, you know, I'm not... Uh, uh, like I say, uh, it's it's going to have some of the style. Um, but, uh, you know... I, I I'm not Japanese. I'm not pretending to be. So you know, <laughs> it's, uh, you know, it's kind of like uh, you know. I guess I'm not gonna go ream their ass for doing a superhero story that got popular in Japan. So, mm -hmm. you know. although, although um, if there if there ends up being a if there ends up being somebody trying to translate in Japanese, I will die laughing. <laughs> you may translate what eternal armor into Japanese. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, you know. I mean, if, it depends on you know. Depends on if it's official or not, I suppose. Um. You no, know, but if it's like I can see, like a what is it like a. Uh, the the fan sub into Japanese of Eternal Armor. Um. Yeah, so, something like that. At, at first, I thought you were gonna say fan dub, and I'm like, that'd be even, that'd be even crazier. Uh, I'd be yeah, it'd be crazy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, in fact, I should probably hire, I should hire somebody to just do that. <laughs> I mean, I'd 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 love to, I'd love to see that happening just so we can, I. I want to see how many lay how many layers of irony we can go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, we're go look, we're go look. Something like Eternal Armor is gonna is gonna have some is gonna have some cheese, so why half ass that? For sure. For sure. I mean, you know. I did a you know I've done a fantasy book, I've done a um retro sci-fi book and you know now no, no, it's a robot book mm -hmm. so i mean you know that's uh you know i'm probably gonna do a book in every genre i like that's um you know it's just the way of it uh i don't know but uh superhero will finally be coming next year um but right now you know eternal armor um you know, like I say, it's not 
that's why I say we're not exactly, you know, we're not trying to 100% emulate manga or anything like that. So, uh, it's just a style. Um, I like, if you don't like big ass robots, then, then I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> clearly you're uncivilized. And clearly. But with but with all that's with all that said, um, I do want to sincerely thank you for taking the time out of your schedule to come on to, come on to the show and enjoy enjoy the insanity. And of course, anytime you see fit to return to the temple, the door is always open. Oh, thank you for having me, man. It's um, always a pleasure to be here. Um, I certainly look forward to coming back, and uh, maybe maybe we can do that once uh, once things are rolling. Mm-hmm. Um. And of, and of course, a sincere thanks to everybody who took the time out of their schedule to enjoy the madness. And there will be plenty more where that came from, as there always is here, on the open bar of the internet. But until then, on behalf of the Good Brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra, I am your gaming monk, stay fucking frosty, everybody! <laughs>